In today's video, we will be going over how to use Kira Slicer for new users. This is version 4.11 on the Technivorous channel. Hi folks and welcome to the channel. If you're new to Kira, this video is for you. Today we're going to show you how to import and manipulate your models as well as slice them and get them ready to print. So. Uh, by this point, you should have already seen my machine setup video, and you should be ready to go. So your screen should look somewhat like this. What we're going to do is go ahead and import a model. I have a bunch here. Let's just go ahead and grab one. And all you have to do is drag and drop. Okay, As long as it's an STL, a 3MF, or an OBJ, it should import. If you're having problems with .obj files, there are extensions for that in the marketplace. For now, try to stick with the STL because that's what we're mostly going to be using and it's a little easier to deal with. So dragging and dropping will import it. You can also go to file, open file, or click on this guy right here and that will open a file for you as well. So you can see all my STLs listed here. Um, all you have to do is click and hit open. Once you have the model in, well you might want to take a look at it. So let's discuss navigation. Uh, in order to rotate around the view. I am hitting the right mouse button, clicking and dragging. Okay, so that's going to give me a orbit view. If I hold shift and do the same thing, I can pan around. And if I use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, I can scroll closer, rotate to one side, and then pan it to the middle. So again, mouse wheel is going to be your zoom. Right click and hold to drag or to uh, orbit, and then shift and right click and hold to pan around okay that's the basic navigation setup uh, you can also use the num keys to rotate or orbit around the center of your object I'm hitting six right now on the numpad and up and down work as well the diagonal keys do not um, so you can also use the arrow keys as well and that is basically the gist of navigation super simple so once you've figured out how to navigate around your space, you might want to manipulate your model. Say I don't want to print it in this orientation. You can see here that there are a couple of different colors. And the color denoted by the red markings here, that is places where in my settings I'm going to need support. And you can see I have the support checkbox clicked here. Um, and that will make sure that these parts that stick out aren't trying to print in thin air. Using support you'll get a lot better quality print. This teal color right here is the face that's actually touching the build plate okay um, and there's actually a third color if I drag it down you can see that this blue color is the stuff that is sticking out of the build plate uh, and all I did was click on the model by clicking on it you're allowed to manipulate it and you can drag it on these axes here um, you can also grab it and drag it around um, control Z will undo your last step so remember that it does come in handy uh, if your model, like mine at the moment, is too far below the base of the build plate, if you drag it upwards and let go, it should drop it to touch the build plate. And you can see now we have that teal color back. And we're, well, it looks like we're still sticking through a little bit, which shouldn't be the case. There we go. That's better. Um, so now I'm getting a lot of red, and that means I'm going to have a lot of overhang. So what if I want to print this on a different side? So. Um, moving it, the translate, like I said, you just use these arrows, it's pretty simple. Uh, but I want to rotate, so I'm going to click on this one, the third one down here. And you won't be able to select this if you don't have your object selected, so make sure you click on it. That'll bring up the rotate menu. Now, I can either use these, and each time you click an arrow, it'll rotate at 90 degrees in that direction. Um, I can grab the wheel and free rotate it. And right now it's rotating by 15 degree increments because it has snap rotation on. So if I need to dial it in and rotate it, say, one degree, uh, I turn off snap rotation. And you can see I can rotate by degrees now. Um, most of these uh, rotational tools I don't use very often because there's a handy feature right here. Um, first of all, if I click lay flat, it'll get rid of some of these overhangs and it'll give me a face to the build plate. Um, and that's as flat as it's going to get it on that side. But I can, however, use this button. Now, this is select face to align to build plate. And with that selected, whatever I click on 
is going to be put on the build plate on the bottom. So uh, if I printed this, I'd probably do it uh, in the original orientation, this orientation right here. Um, and that is basically it for rotating. That's how you manipulate your model to get it spun in the direction that you want. And that is going to determine things like overhangs and other things such as that. So um, there is one more handy tool over here that we're going to go over, and that is the scale tool. And we'll just check that out real quick. Basically, it has uniform scaling on to begin with. There's also snap scaling. Now, snap scaling will use a 5 or 10 millimeter increment or percent increment, excuse me, and reduce it by that amount. Uniform scaling, you generally always want to leave on because that means if I change the X to say 80% and hit enter, it will change the Y and the Z as well. And that'll keep my dimensions and make sure that I'm not elongating the object because if I turn that off, and let's say I put the X back to 100, it'll only scale the X and it leaves the Y and Z at 80. So my part won't fit with other parts that it was meant to because it'll be too wide. So uniform scaling is very, very handy. And that's basically the gist of it for simple navigation. So um, once you've got the object rotated, placed, and oriented in the direction that you want, that's when you're gonna check out these settings over here. And if you're just starting Kira for the first time, your settings should look pretty much like this, somewhere between 15 and 20% um, uh, 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 infill. And then the default layer height should be between 0.12 and 0.02. I'm using 0.16, and that's what we're going to slice at. I do have support turned on, and I have adhesion turned on. Now, I told you that support is what it builds up to keep these red spots from printing on thin air. But let's take a moment to discuss adhesion. So if I slice this guy, and it will take a minute to slice, uh, we'll actually go into our custom settings. But if I slice it, you'll see what I have for adhesion here. Um, these settings work fairly well, and if you're a new user, I definitely recommend getting used to these before going into custom. But in most cases, you will be using custom. Um, never mind the fact that this is orange. I'm printing some parts that don't have any infill. They're all walls because it's a little bit stronger, so that's why my settings are a little wacky right now. But we want to look at build plate adhesion and support. So right now I have generate support turned on. You could see that in the, in the recommended settings. And I have build plate adhesion turned on as well, and it's set to brim. So there are three different types of adhesion. The brim is great for flat objects with corners uh, because it'll help keep the corners adhered to the bed. Basically, it's going to print a one layer thick line around the perimeter of the first layer in order to help keep it adhered. There are two other modes for build plate adhesion, such as skirt and raft. Raft is going to print a whole plate underneath it and then print the object on top of that makes it really easy for bed removal and I tend to print rafts if I'm printing multiple parts at a time because it makes it a little easier to take them off and separate them. Uh, for the most part I will be using brim on all of my models just to get that little bit of extra adhesion but there is a setting here called skirt as well and with the skirt setting you'll get an outline around your object but not touching your object so that basically will purge any leftover plastic that's in the nozzle and prime the nozzle before it starts printing but you don't really get any adhesion bonus because there isn't really anything touching the model to hold it to the build plate. Uh, whether or not you're going to want adhesion is going to depend a lot on what material you're using. For the most part, if you're using a PLA or PLA+, plus, adhesion isn't necessarily required unless you're pl printing a large flat object because sometimes the corners can lift and that's definitely not optimal. So You can see it's taken a while to slice. It's telling me this print is going to take 13 hours and 38 minutes. That is determined by a, several speed settings that are in here, but I'm not going to mess with those right now. We're going to jump over to preview mode, and we can see what the breakdown of the G-code for this file is going to look like, and it'll tell us exactly how it's going to run each layer, and we can kind of scan through them and make sure there's no errors with the model. So um, you can see, as I said, uh, I am printing with no infill and all walls. So this model does look a little funny. In most cases, you will see this yellow color, taking up most of the interior of the model. This red color is denoting the very exterior wall, and the green color is all of the walls inside the object. So if I were to slice it properly, there would be infill in here, and we'll go over that in another video as well. I just want to kind of give you an idea of how to run the system. So over here on the right, there is a scroll bar, and that will lead you up and down through the layers so you can check each individual layer. When you get to one layer that you want to see in particular, you can go down here to the bottom and you can scroll through that as well. 
and you can actually rewind it all the way and watch it play and it will show you the exact pattern the tool head is going to run on that layer. Uh, so that comes in handy as well. Not something you have to check too often. If you've printed a model and you're having issues with certain areas of that model, throw it on here, check out the preview and see if there's something in the G code that you can see that looks funky or doesn't seem to be working right. And then maybe find if you can adjust that setting over here and that will normally help you dial in a more perfect print. Now that we have it all sliced up and our settings are proper, all we have to do is save it to a disk in most cases, I would insert a micro USB card, uh, micro SD card, excuse me, via my USB port, and I would save to that, and then just move it over to my printer, and you can go ahead and print. So that's basically the gist of it, guys. This is a quick video. I just wanted to give you a real quick rundown of how to use Kira Slicer. Now you should be able to import models, rotate around the build area, pan, zoom, and manipulate the models, such as moving them around and rotating them. Once you get to the point of slicing, if you're not happy with the quality of your prints, I will put a handy dandy little card up here. If you click on the link by the mouse cursor floating around, it will take you to a playlist of mine called Kira Settings in 5 Minutes or Less. And in that playlist, you will find individual videos for each of the settings in Kira. So I recommend running through that playlist real quick or even just skipping around and checking out the settings you want to know because it will make it a lot easier to get you familiar with Kira pretty quickly. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I make Kira videos all the time, and I have another playlist called Kira Questions, where I answer any questions you have about Kira in video form. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to leave me a question in the comments down below. I try to get back to everybody and respond to all of them, and it's a great way for me to come up with ideas for videos and know what people want to see. So definitely leave your questions down below, and I'll put a card up here as well. For the Kira questions playlist so feel free to jump over and check that out uh, we've done quite a few so far and I'm excited to get more questions so I need more eyes on that playlist in order for people to get curious and start dropping me lines so uh, that's gonna be it guys like I said smash that like button and we'll see you in the next one stick around guys I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here and if you haven't already subscribe 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 make sure that you smash that like button We'll see you in the next one. Technivorous out.